When you think about tough places to grow up, the streets of Camden, New Jersey are as mean as any. But in this neighborhood, surrounded by potholed asphalt and burned out houses, is an island of hope in the form of a school. The fidgety fourth graders don't look like math nerds, neither does Howard Baker. Four times a week, he teaches math at Cream Elementary, the same algebra you struggled with in high school. The difference is how he does it. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Baker. At the sight of the math teacher, the kids light up. Raise your hand and tell me how much 2 to the power of 5 is equal to. How much is 2 to the power of 5? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times two. The Project Seed method involves every student continuously. They signal their answers or questions through sign language designed to reinforce learning. It all seems to work. Here. Thank you. Quantity 2 to the power 5 times quantity 2 to the power 3 equals. Before you were in Project Seed, when you took math, what did you think of math? Boring. Yes. Well, I liked math before I did Project Seed, but, but I wasn't very good at it. I like Project C better, better than I like math because before, math used to be like a big blow-off. Math's been a blow-off for the country. Alpha to the power, quantity, beta plus gamma. They have brains, and if they're challenged, then they meet teachers who are enthusiastic and kind and loving and willing to challenge them to do and be their best they can do. Unique among instructional programs, Project SEED's impact has been documented by longitudinal studies and evaluations conducted in five different decades in districts across the country. It has been repeatedly cited as a benchmark program by government panels and authors studying equity in education. Its effectiveness is beyond question. There are no other programs that I know of that outperforms Project SEED in mathematics. It's, it's nationally recognized, it's, it's based on research and evidence, um, it's based on best practices. Um, in this district, we have seen the results and, and we're, in, we're excited about that. And, and when I analyze the math data for the district, um, I find myself mumbling under my breath, Project C, um, because I know the difference that that program has made. The first evaluation of Project SEED uh, produced significant results. Uh, we changed evaluators uh, and did another evaluation of Project SEED. It produced significant results. We then went into a long uh, longitudinal uh, evaluation of SEED with yet another uh, evaluator. And again, over the long haul, uh, we got very consistent results. When we observe uh, a SEED classroom, it's very clear that the students are understanding, they're getting the concepts. We actually had an outside evaluator who, pr who gave the students an assessment that uh, is given by Project SEED across the country. And our students in Baltimore County uh, exceeded the national average for the Project SEED assessment. So our students can do it. And what we're trying to do is figure out a way to make sure that all of our students have an opportunity to have access to the Project SEED mathematics and the Project SEED uh, instruction strategies. The traditional math from what I can remember so long ago is that we were given facts, we were asked to solve them, and that was it. In Project Seed and with what we're supposed to teach the students now, they have to under, be able to explain how they know their answer, why their answer is correct, what did they do to arrive at their answer, how would their answer change if we change this factor, if we change that factor. So Project Seed really helped to do that because the whole lesson is what do you know, why do you know it, how do you know it? And it was never given to them. The students always gave it to the instructor and to each other. Our third grade African American boys were first in the state two years ago in their mathematics I-STEP scores. And then last year, all third grade in Washington Township was first in the state. I have been absolutely astonished with the response that I've been able to observe with the students and their, uh, the way that they embrace algebra. Project SEED has demonstrated that young students are capable of learning and understanding advanced level mathematical concepts and when taught properly, they can perform above normal expectations. Project SEED is one of the fundamental programs that 
uh, moves us closer and closer into the 21st century with regards to interactive uh, learning. Uh, Project SEED is a program that we are looking forward to expanding uh, throughout our entire organization. Uh, math skills are fundamental uh, for the future with regards to uh, critical thinking and higher order thinking. And uh, the younger that we can give our youngsters opportunities to have access to that type of development, uh, the better we're going to be in the long run. Then negative M plus A equals negative C and negative M plus negative A equals negative F, then negative, I mean, then A plus C equals M because if I split the C to M plus negative, negative A and bring the plus down, then bring the A down, bring the equals down, it equals to M because I will these are additive inverses. All those scholars, please read it. Ready? Go. The summation of 2 to the power of negative y as y goes from 3 to 7 equals. That was a wonderful reading. First, we will find the uh, antiderivative of negative 32 feet per second, per second which is negative 30. 32 t plus 128. Now I'm going to prove the derivative of the specs of t, 4t squared equals 8t. As the instantaneous speed is found by the limit of the average speed limit as n approaches t, 11n. My fellow mathematicians, I think it is zero because if you take away the iso plus and put, and put a zero, Three times zero equals zero. Staff of Project Seed has come into our classroom. It's not just a make it take it program where we have gone and received the professional development with Project Seed and been expected to come back to our learning community and apply it, but Project Seed has taught us. Then they have come right into our buildings and worked right alongside of the classroom teachers as well as the students to impact student learning. So while they may be working with students, they are also working with teachers at the same time. Most of the professional developments that, stu that teachers are used to um, getting, it's a sit and get type activities that they go to. They're either looking at a video or they're going to a workshop and then they have to um, process their information there and then try to remember it and then bring it back to the classroom. But with Project C, this was just, it, this was an actual um, modeling um, professional development where the teachers got to see it happening and then able to bring it back to the classroom. So just a great example of what we want to happen with professional development. It looks as though the days when you've done some, um, when you've modeled and then you come back and you co-teach, uh, and the, it looks it looks the same. I mean, you would you would you would think that you're in the room as well. So they've done they've done a really good job. Those teachers have done a really good job of continuing to implement um, that instruction. It's been really helpful in my classroom because I feel that all the kids get to participate. They have a voice in the classroom when they get to signal, agree or disagree, or they're not sure. It also gives me a quick assessment as to how all the kids are doing. Um, and I've learned a ton of ways uh, to incorporate algebra into my lessons as well. It's really nice. You have to think a lot and think a little bit differently out of box. But once you get it going, the biggest part of this, again, ties into student engagement because they're so much more excited. And then it stays with them longer when they generate it themselves instead of me telling them and trying to have them memorize it. So just coming out with different questions. And then I like questioning also because it helps with differentiation. So I can have simple questions that are going to help a certain level of students that I can make sure that one student that hasn't been comfortable gets called on. And then also I can ask a higher level challenging questions. So that helps with like the students who are more advanced to keep them engaged. So it really helps keep engagement. And then when they do come up with the concept on their own, they remember them a lot better. Raise your hand when you're going to answer. I'm going to call when I get maybe five hands. Some people need time to try it. One, two, three. Three and a half, three, four, five. Ubaldo, you've been quiet today. Eight, 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 eight. Show me if you agree. 
Does that work? Show me if you agree. Did anybody have another way? Because remember here, we could do it with just about any song. Who has another way? One of the things that's been really helpful with my students is they're really vocal and they like to be very active. So using the hand signals really gives them a chance to express themselves. Looking for patterns and using the function machine is really exciting for them. So if the next shape I draw is a triangle, who can tell me what would come after the triangle? Take a look at this. What's the next shape that would come after there? Okay. Demonte, darling, would you please call on a student to tell me what shape's going to come next in our pattern? Brandon, what do you think? Circle. Circle. Okay, somebody else, what do you think? Mariah, what do you think it is? Circle. Circle. Someone else. Camille, what do you think it is? Circle. Circle. Anyone else? Cal Sean, what do you think? Circle. Circle? Sounds like a lot of circles. If you were thinking circle, can you show me yes? No? Okay. When I get to a circle, can you just tell me to stop so I know what to draw? Because I'm starting to forget my shapes. Stop. Right here, okay. No. No? no? All right, you've got to stop me right when I get there. Try it again. Stop! That was better. There's our circle. Okay. What will be another shape? We're going to continue that pattern. What do you think would come next? Benjamin. Pentagon. Did anybody else think Pentagon? Good signals. You guys are on top of it. Okay. I've noticed because uh, Mr. Halili does a lot of mental math problems that um, I'm getting better at it. And so my anxiety with um, number sense has actually decreased because of this. I have students who are very apprehensive about math, but when I see them um, using the hand signals, it gives them the freedom to uh, participate in class when maybe they would normally not feel comfortable to participate. My absolute favorite is showing support for other students. They just, from the very first day, have done that in all subjects, whether they're explaining an answer in reading or in social studies, they are always showing support for each other, and I think that's really great. Project C gives them the opportunity to prove to themselves and to improve their self-esteem and confidence in themselves that they can achieve almost anything that they want to achieve. It's just amazing to see how much the children can absorb. Without Project Seed, I would have never even considered uh, exposing them to the concepts that Project Seed exposed them to. And that by exposing them to higher mathematics, it enables them to understand the grade level mathematics that they're supposed to get. It's not usual for most sixth graders to study calculus. And at this um, grade, and most students take calculus in 12th grade, but most take it in college and have trouble with it. But we are sixth graders, and we are learning a lot about calculus, and I really appreciate it. When I first came, it was kind of hard. Now that I know how to do it, I'd be helping my mother. Now I feel more confident in myself. I don't doubt that I can't do anything. Now I believe that if I put my mind to it, I can do it. Anything. Anything. Come see our class. Come see our class! Come see our class! Come see our class!